Hello and welcome to the session. Today we shall look at death-defying cancer cells. So as you've seen before, death is a part of life. We all know that and it's inevitable. And the point about cells dying is not unusual. In fact, way back in 1972, three scientists, Kerr, Wiley and Curry, formed the opinion that actually cancers result because there's not enough cell death. Now, usually we think of cancer as excessive cell division or growth. And this was quite a revolutionary concept at the time because this went against the concept of simply looking at cancer as super dividing cells. So let's look at how this concept of reduced cell death occurs in tumor cells. Before I go into that, I thought I'd give you a brief insight about how cells die. Now, there are several ways that cells die from, but there are two common pathways of cell death. One of them is called necrosis. Now, if you look at this cell, it's a typical cell. You see the outer um, membrane, you have the nucleus in purple, and the chromatin shown as the white blob in the middle of the DNA. Typically, in necrosis, this cell bursts open, just like a balloon would. And this is rather a messy way to die. And this leads to several repercussions uh, to a cell. Now, if you look at this typical cell over here, here you have the simple diagram with the membrane, the chromatin or the DNA is shown in blue. And what you see in orange are little organelles called mitochondria, the energy powerhouses of any cell. What happens in necrosis is that this cell, which is going to die, starts to take up water. It starts to swell up. The DNA doesn't change. The chromatin doesn't change. But the mitochondria starts to swell up too. And as a result, eventually, because of this excessive swelling, the cell simply lyses or bursts open. And the consequences for this cell is not just the death, but also for the tissue, there's a severe inflammatory response that is triggered as a result. So this is a very messy way to die, really. In contrast, you have something called as apoptosis, which is a type of uh, programmed cell death, genetically controlled programmed cell death. And the reason why this picture is relevant is in autumn, when you see leaves falling from trees, that is due to apoptosis. These stems of these leaves are told to kill themselves, and as a result, the leaf detaches from the tree. And this is done in a very, very systematic way. It's, if I had to give you an analogy, think of it like a scaffolding of a building. It's put up, and very neatly, the scaffold can be taken down. The same thing happens in a cell. So a cell systematically starts to package its internal uh, bits and bobs. It takes the chromatin or the DNA, breaks it down into small blobs. It breaks down the cell membrane into nice little bodies, as we shall see in a minute. But this is a complete contrast to necrosis, which is a bursting open process, whereas apoptosis is a process in which the cell systematically shrinks. And if I had to show you a similar diagram again. Here's our cell, again with the mitochondria in orange and the DNA in blue. So in complete contrast to necrosis, what you see here is that the DNA is starting to increase, or rather uh, what's happening is it's forming, it's being broken down into neat systematic bodies. There's not much change in the size of the mitochondria, but the cell is starting to change shape and shrink. Eventually, the membranes bleb off, as they are called, or form discrete contained bodies called as the apoptotic bodies. So literally, it's a fragmentation of the cell into several little bits, and none of the contents of the cell spills out. And these apoptotic bodies are then got rid of by engulfment or being eaten up by either a neighboring cell or by a macrophage, which is a cell from your immune system. So there's no evidence left behind ever that there was a cell in this area. So a complete removal of the cell. 
And apoptosis actually is hardwired into every cell. It's part of normal development. When we are born, did you know that we were born as ducks? Because what happens is in early development, the fingers are held together by a membrane, just like you would see in a duck's feet. But as development progresses, the cells that lie within this membrane are told to kill themselves through apoptosis. And that is how we get the sculpting of fingers. And apoptosis happens for, to our immune system. It happens in the brain. Again, our brain produces excessive neurons. And these brain cells are then killed off systematically unless they are used. So this is part of biology. You produce excess and then you trim off uh, cells that you don't need. And in normal cells, you get apoptosis that is switched on, typically as a response to something bad that's going on. So for example, if either the cell or the DNA is damaged in any way, that cell will be told to kill itself. Or if there is extreme conditions such as high temperatures or pH or acidic conditions or some sort of radiation, etc., then that cell is stressed and that cell is told to kill itself. Alternatively, signals are sent by either a neighboring cell or by the surroundings or through a remote location. And these signals typically are factors that trigger the pathway that leads to apoptosis. Now, this is what happens when things go wrong. And this process is highly controlled. So in cancer cells, for example, when a cell should be killing itself off, if it doesn't do so, that leads to excessive uh, proliferation because these cells, which, are, which have damaged DNA, are allowed to grow and continue. On the flip side of the coin, you can get some cells where apoptosis is triggered when they shouldn't be. For example, in the brain, neurons in the brain can die when dysregulated apoptosis occurs, when for example, in Alzheimer's disease, where parts of the brain that control memory are killed off due to apoptosis. In the case of cancer cells, typically you have a whole signaling pathway that is triggered. So if I give you the example of a normal cell here, here's a stressed normal cell. Typically, factors or sensors or proteins that detect any change in the internal situation are activated. And one example I've given you here is of a molecule called P53. P stands for simply a protein, which is a size of 53 kilodaltons, which is a unit we use to measure proteins. And that protein is activated, it's stabilized. And if it finds that this cell will first try to repair any damage, but if that damage cannot be repaired, P53 will tell the cell, okay, you need to start to begin the process of death apoptosis. Cancer cells, on the other hand, have mutations. And one of these mutations perhaps could be in this P53 molecule. So this molecule, when it should be doing its job by detecting and telling the cell to kill itself, it might not be able to do this job properly. And as a result, that cell will not die due to apoptosis and continue to divide and accumulate mutations. So that is what happens when cancers result from insufficient or lack of apoptosis. And as a result, they lend themselves quite nicely as treatment targets. So if we can trigger apoptosis in cancer cells, that's a very good way of killing off these cells. And there are quite a few drugs which have entered clinical trials. And one example I've given you here is a drug called Mepatumumab. And this drug acts on a receptor. You've heard of receptors earlier in the chemical signals session. So, so typically, you also have receptors that trigger apoptosis. So this drug triggers a receptor for apoptosis called TRAIL, T-R-A-I-L. There's some mixed reviews. The clinical trials are still going on, but this offers a useful opportunity for treating cancer cells. So this summarizes some of the key points about how cancer cells evade apoptosis. And there are different types of cell death, necrosis and apoptosis. And apoptosis is generally triggered by stress damage or signaling pathways 
and inducing apoptosis in cancer cells is a good way of providing treatment for certain types of cancers.